Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about plants that appreciate shady spots in your garden. So mine is a west facing garden and pretty much this whole side here that I'm showing you now is in shade most of the day. It's currently around 3 p.m. in the afternoon but I did take some footage this morning and at lunchtime just to show you how much um, sunlight this corner gets. So I'll just go along and show you what I'm currently growing on this side. And most of the plants have been here for about three years. It's not the best soil either, to be honest. So there's actually some parts where I couldn't even plant anything, like this very front corner here. It's literally rock solid underneath. So I do actually have an old artificial fern there at the very front. And we've got a real one here. I did try to plant a real one there, but you just literally can't even dig down into that soil. It's absolutely awful. So let's start off with the Fatsia japonica. These were quite small when I got them. So in three years, they're almost at the top of the fence. I like these because they've got these lovely, big, exotic looking leaves. So I absolutely love the foliage on these. I like that they can get quite tall and they appreciate the shade. I do have a couple of these on this side. So things like ferns are really good for growing in the shade. I would say that this side is more of a dry shade um, just because I have got quite a lot of trees next door which are obviously taking in quite a lot of moisture from the soil. I wouldn't say it was dry dry maybe in between um, wet and dry shade obviously ferns usually appreciate um, wet shade although you can get certain varieties that um, tend to enjoy more of a dry shade um, I've got a little pot of mint there as well so we've got um, a camellia here these are really nice if you'd like to grow something that flowers in springtime and it's evergreen, so it's gonna stay looking nice all year round. And then I just try and jazz up this border with a few decorative items. So I've got a concrete tiki here from Tiki Heads, a bird of paradise metal um, ornament, and I've got a beach wooden ornament there. I got this from eBay a couple of years ago, and then I just mounted it on some bamboo. Got another bird of paradise there behind because really I can't grow anything too exciting over on this side so if you've got a corner that's looking not very exciting I'd just recommend putting some nice um, decorative items in with it as you can see I've got um, a flamingo there that's a Don Featherstone real mingo I've had quite a few people asking about these and then up on the fence I've got a lovely Trader Tark um, wooden plaque. So it just makes this um, fence a little bit more interesting. Oh and I've forgotten, behind here we do have a evergreen hydrangea. I've got another one over here so I'll show you this one. So this is called Hydrangea Seamaniae. It's an evergreen climbing hydrangea. It does flower although it hasn't flowered this year when it produces nice white cluster flowers um, but it has gone wild this year and it's really um, taken off. These can take um, a while to kind of get started. I think I planted this two years ago and to be honest it took off um, quicker than I thought. It's doing quite well and it's just nice that it's evergreen, covers a bit of the fence and obviously appreciates a shady spot in the garden. I've also got my standard hydrangeas, which to be honest, haven't really done very well this year. They were fine last year and the year before, but this year they haven't really produced many flowers. And I think I need to fertilize them. This one's looking a little bit yellow. 
to be honest, we've had such a rubbish spring and summer this year that I haven't really um, fertilised the plants as often as I should have. So that's my fault. Here we've got a, another variety of Fatsia, and this is the spider's web variety. So this is a nice variegated version. So if you're looking for something a little bit different to the standard Fatsia, this one's really nice. I wouldn't say this one is as fast growing as my other ones, but it looks really pretty. And again, this one appreciates the shade and they're all fine over winter, evergreen. So I've got another Camellia here. Another Hydrangea. <laughs> and then another Fatsia, which has grown absolutely huge. Let me try and find one of the large leaves. Look how big this leaf is. I just love these because they do have a really tropical look to them. And I'm hoping eventually this will get quite tall and then I can underplant it as well with maybe some ferns or something. But they do tend to multiply as well. So this started off as one plant um, and now there's kind of a few trunks down there. Again, I've got another Hydrangea Seamanii behind. It's not getting quite as much light as the other one though, so it hasn't taken off quite as well. But I'm sure once it gets up past these leaves, it will be fine. You can also get certain varieties of Clematis that enjoy the shade. This is one of mine. It's looking a bit tatty now. It's already finished flowering. So I've tried planting a few things in the gaps, this being one of them. But I wouldn't say it's um, taken off, to be honest. I think it's been devoured by slugs. Um, but yeah, apparently this is quite good for the shade and it flowers. But yeah, it hasn't really done very well. So yes, maybe I'll consider putting something else in the gaps next year. If you're looking for something that looks really tropical and exotic for a shady spot in your garden, you'll love the Dixonia Antarctica, the Australian tree fern. These are evergreen, depending on your climate. Here in the south of the UK, um, these tend to keep their fronds over the winter. They can go a little bit brown, but generally they look, they look quite good. And all I do over winter is just put a little bit of straw in the crown. I will be making a proper video on how I overwinter my garden, um, probably towards the end of September and October. So this is a really lovely plant that looks nice and tropical. This is in um, kind of part shade over here. So this middle island on the other side gets more sun and on this side it's a bit shadier. So I've just got a couple of um, Nandinas here. Uh, which you can grow in um, part sun or shade apparently so I'll just have to see how they do here I haven't had them here for very long I did actually move these from the, the front garden this is the variety firepower just got another fern there and then apparently um, these forest flames also um, grow quite well in shady spots in the garden as well. Again, I only just planted these here recently, so I'll have to see how they do. So there is a huge variety of plants that you can grow in the shade. Some of the flowering plants include foxgloves, a still bee, bleeding hearts, um, mahonia is quite a good one. That can grow quite big. That's got kind of tropical looking leaves and then it produces these lovely yellow flowers as well. Rhododendrons are quite good in shady spots and they've got lovely um, tropical looking flowers. You can also get certain varieties of bamboo that appreciate the shade. I do have one hidden at the back here. I really do probably need to move it. But yeah, that's in the shade and that's doing okay. Although it is very, very shaded there in the corner. But at the time I just wanted something to kind of fill that gap but now everything's grown, I should probably move it. Apparently, um, Japanese maples also appreciate um, shady spots in the garden. This one was originally a stick that I dug up from my last house in the garden, and I can't believe that it's actually turned into a tree. It's really beautiful, especially in autumn when the leaves turn that gorgeous red and orange color. 
So a few other plants that you might consider for shady spots in your garden would be Brunera or Brunera, however you pronounce it. I did actually see the Jack of Diamonds variety in a local garden centre recently and at the time I didn't pick it up and then when I got home I thought oh I wouldn't mind one of those and I went back a few days later to get it and they'd all gone so I think it's probably the wrong time of year to pick those up at the moment but I might get one next year. Also there's a plant called Spotty Dotty which appreciates a nice shady spot in your garden. Again I wouldn't mind getting one of those but I think I'll wait until next year now. There's another plant with lovely spotty foliage as well. I don't pronounce the name of it so I'll just attach the name on the screen with a photo um, but that looks really cool and apparently it grows orange flowers on these tall spikes so that that would probably be a nice one for a shady spot. Also you can grow certain euphorbias, um, hardy hibiscus which I do have actually over on my sunny spot but I did read when I was um, trying to do a bit of research it did say that you can grow it in the shade apparently. So this is my hibiscus over here. This one usually starts flowering at the end of August. Um, it's already got the buds so that should be flowering in the next probably week or so. It gets really really tall and this is a hardy hibiscus so it it's fine over winter. I just chop it back, mulch over it and then it comes back each year. You can also grow certain varieties of colocasia in shady spots. Um, pink china would probably be okay and also the colocasia esculenta. This is a tender colocasia so I do have to dig this one up but the pink chinas stay in the ground all year. You can also grow certain varieties of hosta in the shade. I do have one at the back which has been completely devoured by slugs so I wasn't even going to show it but this one usually looks really beautiful. Um, this one is called Patriot I think. It's a nice variegated hosta. Uh, that one does well in the shade if you don't have lots of slugs in the garden. Um, also Caladiums do well in the shade. Again, these are tender, so they have to go in over winter. This one's not really looking its best this year. It looked much better last year. But as I mentioned, we haven't really had the best um, summer. It's not been very hot. Got some more ferns at the back here in deep shade. I can't remember the variety offhand of these. Um, these particular ones do tend to die back in the winter and then they come back in the spring. I mentioned that the Australian tree ferns do prefer a more shaded spot although I do grow this one in more of a sunnier position and it seems to be fine it just means that I need to water it a bit more than the other one this one's quite a bit bigger than my other tree fern so beautiful I also read that you can apparently grow viburnum in shady spots as well this one that I recently planted is kind of part shaded at the back here gets um, a bit of sun earlier on in the day so I'll just have to see how it does but yes apparently you can grow this one in shady spot so I think I've pretty much covered everything that I am growing in the shade in my garden and as I mentioned it is a west-facing garden and this side here is pretty much in the shade all day and everything seems to be doing okay apart from it needs fertilizing but that's um, that's my fault I haven't been haven't been on it with the fertiliser this year really. I haven't even had to water the garden much this year either because it's just been so rainy and cold. I know some people aren't really a fan of hydrangeas for a tropical garden but I just think they're really reliable. They just give a, a nice little splash of colour all the way until autumn and I think if you mix them in with other tropical looking plants they can look quite nice. In regards to ground cover for shady spots, I don't really know too much about that, but I think these um, baby's tears um, grow okay in the shade from what I read. Um, these have gone mad actually, so perhaps I'll test a few of those out in this border next year and see how they do. So I just wanted to show you the view from underneath my so as you can see that side 
complete shade. Half of the island is pretty much shaded and then as you go across you get full sun over on this side of the garden. So late morning the sun is up here above the fence and then it comes round all the way around here and then sets over on this side. I also wanted to test out how well a honeysuckle would do in a shady spot. I planted this one probably about a month ago and it's actually doing quite well. So it doesn't get any sun here at all. It's very shaded in this corner because obviously it's uh, completely under cover and it seems to be doing okay. So um, no flowers yet, but it was quite um, small when I first got it. They were, they were kind of up to here. And as you can see, they've kind of grown up the fence and they're getting quite tall. So I'll keep an eye on that. And if it does well, then I would probably recommend um, this honeysuckle for a um, shady spot as well. It's very similar to this one that I've got over here which is called Drop More Scarlet. This one produces these like beautiful orangey coral flowers and I think from memory this one produces um, like a lighter peachier colour flower but I just thought it would look really nice if they're growing up the fence on each side and then kind of meeting in the middle. And this one flowers all summer, all the way to autumn. Really pretty. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you've got any questions, please leave it in the comments section below. I know there's obviously tons and tons of plants that you can grow in the shade, but I just really wanted to show you what I am personally growing in the shade and what I've been growing for about three years. Most of these plants have been here for three years. And then I just wanted to recommend a few extra ones that I had on my list as well. But if you've got any good suggestions of shade loving plants, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to doing my summer garden tour very soon. Hopefully the weather will um, not get too cold over the next few weeks. It's just been, um, it's been rubbish really. Even my colocasia is still quite small. Usually um, this esculenta is absolutely huge by now. And my canna lilies are only just starting to flower. These are the ones that I leave in the ground every year. That one's flowering, that one's only just literally got a flower spike. A flower spike on this one. But everything's so behind this year. Hopefully we'll get a better summer next year but it's still looking pretty nice anyway and I'm thrilled with how everything has turned out because if you've been following me for a while you'll know that I did have um, a lawn here before which I got rid of because I was having problems with it every year with leather jacket grubs and obviously one side of it was completely shaded and it was just full of moss and it's just like sludge over winter it was awful so I'm really um, excited um, that the garden's actually going to look so different over winter and obviously some of the plants will be kind of wrapped up or um, mulched over or whatever for winter but I think it's just going to look so much nicer than having a, a soggy lawn <laughs> so it's quite exciting and I've got a few little um, bits that I'm waiting on as well um, I'll keep it a surprise but hopefully they'll be arriving in the next couple of weeks. But um, yes, thank you so much for watching everyone. Really appreciate it. Take care, happy gardening, and I'll see you all soon. Mm -hmm.